For those who want to make a lifestyle change to healthier eating but don't know how to start, this video is for you. Now it's easy to be a gourmet vegetarian cook. Just follow CJ step by step. CJ Clark is the chef at the Center for Conservative Therapy in Pengrove, California. Her unique style of fresh cooking has helped many people develop healthy eating habits after suffering with dietary problems for years. Let CJ help you learn to fulfill all your dietary and nutritional needs while eating gourmet vegetarian meals. Sound impossible? Not at all. CJ shows you how to start each day by making scrumptious fresh sauces, juices, and entrees from the Health Promoting Cookbook. She discusses the proper way to organize a kitchen, store vegetables and fruits for optimum nutritional value. Watch CJ and see how easy it is to create delicious, exciting dishes with a minimum of fuss and work. This tape is a must for those that wish to make healthy lifestyle changes. To order your copy of The Vegan Cuisine, call Advertising Works at 800-467-2729. The Health Promoting Cookbook by Dr. Alan Goldhammer, the director of the Center for Conservative Therapy, is perfect for anyone trying to make the transition to a health-promoting diet. By following the easy-to-prepare recipes presented here, anyone, including those on restrictive diets, can create quick, delicious meals. All recipes are free of animal products, fat, oil, salt, sugar, and wheat. A week's worth of complete recipes is provided and designed to ensure optimum nutrition with minimal effort. These recipes have been thoroughly tested on hundreds of patients at the Center for Conservative Therapy's Residential Health Care Program. Detailed nutritional analysis and concise text explains how and why to eat a health-promoting diet. To order your copy of the Health Promoting Cookbook, call Advertising Works at 800-467-2729. Fast is the complete abstinence from all substances except pure water in an environment of complete rest. When we speak of fasting, we're, we speak of specifically about water fasting, which is the abstinence of all substances except water at complete rest. Now, the at complete rest is an important part of that definition. So basically, you're resting, you're not eating or drinking anything except water, and that's how you can maximize. Uh, uh, health benefits from a, from a fast. Now, other people use fasting in the term of just drinking juice, for instance. Uh, they call it juice fasting, which is fine. It can be very helpful, but it's something completely different than water fasting. Okay. Of course, uh, some people, you know, just eating vegetables, they would be considered fasting because they're not eating meat, for instance. But that's in our definition, that's not fasting. That's just eating a different diet. So uh, things that you see with water fasting. Uh, you may not see with anything uh, like juice fasting. So there are some really completely different physiologic events that occur when you do water fasting. Hi there, my name is Terry Porter. I live in Boise, Idaho, and I make TV commercials, documentaries, training tapes, videotapes of all sorts. I want to invite you along on a little uh, fasting trip that Joe Callahan, my son-in-law, and I have decided to take. Maybe we can uh, uh, show you that uh, fasting is uh, something that uh, a person can do to improve their health. Uh, I'm not in the best of health, and neither there is Joe, so maybe you can uh, see that uh, we will have some changes uh, come about, and uh, hopefully for the better. We invite you to uh, spend the next uh, 45 to 50 days with us, and uh, hope that uh, you learn something along with us and uh, maybe the friends that think I'm so kooky won't think I'm so kooky when I'm done. But right now, they all think I'm pretty kooky. There's nothing particularly romantic or um, exciting about fasting. Fasting's hard work. And unfortunately, many people really would rather look for magic than to have to look to the cause of their problems. Also, fasting, there's not very many doctors in the world that know anything about fasting or that are in a position to advise patients about the proper use of fasting. 
So the combination of the fact that it's not well known, people haven't taken responsibility to educate the public about it, and there's not uh, currently as many opportunities to have a properly conducted fast as we would like to see, and the fact that it's not necessarily a lot of fun. Uh, that many aspects of fasting will be quite difficult and challenging. I think all of those things work together to uh, kind of keep it uh, from having been as popular or as well known as we'd like to see it in the coming years. The reason why more doctors don't incorporate fasting into their practice is the same reason I think why more doctors don't incorporate natural therapies of all kinds into their practice, and that is that they're not trained in the use of them, and the use of them has actually been rather actively discouraged throughout the history of the last hundred years that scientific medicine as we know it has been developed. So there's been a, a very dense network of uh, political and economic forces at work acting as a kind of barrier against the incursion of the uh, wild things from natural uh, healing and, and including fasting. My wife is very supportive. Um, actually, all of my family that I've told are very supportive. Uh, I have some friends that think I'm nuts, others that are very curious to see what happens. I'm kind of not telling a lot of people because I just want to send them into shock when I see them when I get back from the clinic. The term fasting is foreign to most people. Uh, most of the people that I'm around don't even understand what that means. Joe and I are going to try to go for a long period of time with having nothing but water to drink. We will have no juices, no foods, no vitamins, no minerals of any kind, just pure water, and that allows our body to uh, do a cleansing. And most people really don't understand that. Some of them think you're a little off base. The biggest thing I want to address, well, there are several things. Um, for one, I don't want to end up like a lot of my family members with problems with diabetes and heart problems and high blood pressure and all those types of things. Uh, I think the biggest thing for me personally right now is uh, I've had fertility problems and I want to have more kids. I want to have a, a family. And that's the biggest thing I hope to accomplish by doing this fast. We're here, <laughs> we'll see. It's getting a little scary now. This is home for the next four or five weeks, so we'll see. <laughs> well, Joe basically uh, needs to lose some weight, uh, I think, and we need to get him on a good diet post-fasting. Those are the main issues. Uh, being overweight can cause a lot of health problems, and you know whether it's pain to, I mean, destruction to joints, uh, etc. Uh, heart disease, those are some really significant health problems, so we want to get his weight down. But the main objective, I think, for Joe to come here is to learn how to eat properly. He can easily fast, uh, you know, three or four weeks, and we'll have to evaluate uh, on a daily basis uh, whether we can continue, but he probably has reserves to go easily three or four weeks. You know, there's a huge scientific literature on the, on the physiological impact of fasting. Um, and detoxification is another big subject that has another huge literature. In a nutshell, I would say that for me, the thing that's, that I tell my patients all the time is that if you want to really turn on your detoxification uh, enzymatic machinery, the way to do that is to fast. And in today's world, there's few health interventions that are as important for maintaining and for regaining and maintaining health as really having your detox system working optimally. And so fasting, therefore, has an even more prominent place now than, than I think it ever did before. And it was, you know, the cornerstone of natural healing from, from the get-go. When I see people changing their lives here, it feels incredible to be able to facilitate the process of people taking control of their health and getting well. I remember when I first started getting into this type of thing, when I was started eating healthier and quit doing all the partying I was doing in college that made me feel pretty lousy. 
I was just so excited uh, to be empowered, to be taking control of my life, and it was just, it was phenomenal. And um, I'm really honored to be able to help people here share that same enthusiasm and that it's, it's just fantastic. It's like you have a whole new lease on life and you know you can be well and you know you're learning. Basically we teach, we give people the tools here that they need to be well, to be optimally healthy in their lives. Just make sure you drink lots of water during the fast and you stay on the grounds. So you don't go out in the roads, okay? And go real easy on the showers. When you're fasting, you don't want to take too much in the way of hot baths or hot showers. They're quite enervating, okay? So you don't do too much of that and move slow and drink lots of water. Weight loss is variable. You lose more weight initially because initially you lose some water, especially people who come in and who have been eating salt. Uh, there's a lot of water retention. But for instance, on a 20-day uh, fast, you could lose 25, 30 pounds. Well, it's day two. I'm still alive and I've lost, uh, believe it or not, six pounds. I'm down to uh, 241. I am just over 36 hours into my fast. I'm feeling great. I have a lot of energy, probably more than I had before I started. Um, as far as my hunger and that goes, when I see food or smell food or around food, I start to notice it a little bit. But, you know, I'm here, I'm doing it, so I'm not gonna quit now. Health results from healthful living, and health is an important part of happiness. If a person wants to be happy, they're going to have to develop a happiness strategy, and that strategy is going to have to incorporate health into it. They've got to create a situation where the overall balance of their life experience is highly positive so that they can experience this mood state that we associate with the term happiness. Um, happiness requires a happiness strategy, and health has to be an important component of that. People that want to be healthy have to know that the cause of health is healthful living. Health results from healthful living. Uh, protein's good for you. It builds strong bodies. Milk is good for you. So it's, it's a whole lifetime of being conditioned one way and then being told something different. And having, we've read a lot of things. It's not just the center telling us this. We're reading things and, and learning that the high protein is hard on our bodies. So that's what makes it a little easier to switch over when you realize you're hurting yourself. And you're getting up to an age now where you need to be more responsible about your own health and do the best you can to keep yourself healthy. So now I'm not afraid of fasting. If I get a cold, I'll probably say, fine, I'm just going to calm down. This is my second fast, and I plan to be here three weeks, give or take a few days. And what I intend to accomplish is um, improved health, finer tuning things, um, getting rid of migraine headaches and cleansing my palate so I'm not drifting off into inappropriate foods and taking time out to take a look at my life and see how I'm going to restructure it now that I'm healthy. While I had done these nutritional things and while I had heard about fasting, I, it never occurred to me to actually try it. I mean, it just wasn't a part of my conceptual vocabulary. But um, when this was proposed as a plan, and Dr. Goldhammer said that he had cures for hypertension and diabetes, not just simply uh, treatments, but people that reversed their disease, their disease didn't come back when they followed the program, I decided, well, I wanted to give it a go. Besides, it struck me as a kind of an unusual life experience, and I was certainly interested in having another unusual life experience. I've had a number in my life, and I thought this would be certainly a learning experience for me. This is my first fast. Um, never fasted before. And, um, you know, in the beginning, they introduced me to fruits and raw fruits and vegetables to prepare my body for the fasting. Um, Just the right season. I was very, very successful fasting for the first week or so. And um, I, you know, my body began to. Uh, try to get rid of all of the toxins and the bile buildup and I don't have a gallbladder so it makes it even a, a little bit more intense um, and so there was a little bit of throwing up but the staff here is so incredible and I, I never for once was afraid of what I was doing not for a second um, they examine you in the mornings um, with your pulse and blood pressure and um, they do blood testing frequently and urine testing to stay on top of what your body is doing. And I, I 
They examine you at night. They check with you to find out how you're feeling, what's going on, uh, your emotions, your physical feelings, if you've gotten sick. Um, all of these things made me very, very confident that this was a very safe thing to do in a very, very safe place. I decided to fast to get, get my, break out of a bad pattern that I was in. I was kind of yo-yoing back and forth between really healthy foods and uh, for about three quarters of the day and then I'd come home and I'd eat a lot of junk food and heavy starches in the evening and I was having a hard time clearing that pattern out. I was trying really hard as much as I could. I just couldn't seem to draw the line and make myself do it. So I decided to just break the pattern up entirely and just start fresh and clean, detoxify my system and come down here and I thought a fast was the best way to do that and it turns out I was right. I decided to do this because I was just really burnt out, I was really tired, and I decided it was time just to rejuvenate. It was four years since I did my last fast and I felt like it was just time again. The other patients or the other people around you are just as supportive. We all go through the same thing. So it's, it's nice to be able to talk about how you feel, talk about all the, the thoughts of what you're going to do afterwards. Talk about food is one of the main topics that comes around, the changes that you're going to make. And it's very enjoyable to be here amongst these people, make new friends. Um, I think it's very inspiring just to be here. Well, um, I really feel like I'm starting a new life. Uh, I feel like uh, this is the first day of the rest of my life for real. Uh, I get a chance to um, in the time I've been here, I, I know that with age you progress uh, in minor problems or major problems in your body. And you can come here and work on one thing, your weight or your, and they don't really even encourage you to work on your weight as much as uh, trying to heal yourself so that you can digest properly. I know it's not just one thing that's working in my body. I know my liver is detoxifying and my kidneys are doing better and my allergies have gone away and uh, I breathe more clearly than I've ever breathed before. Um, and I just want to start off life and have the second half of my life be a whole lot better. I came along with Jim because we thought it might be good. We've been reading about it. A couple of people we know have been here. And we really were interested in getting his cholesterol down. So it's a way that he's lost some weight, and we're looking forward to his first cholesterol check in a month or two to see where it stands. I came along just to support him. But I got here, and I started hearing more about it, so I thought, well, I'll try a three-day. I'll try a three-day fast. And I did. And I'm one who never misses a meal, so I thought I would be in agony, but I wasn't hungry. So I thought, well, that was a snap, so I'll just go for another day. And I ended up doing a five-day. And I could have gone further, but I thought, I'm ready to eat. <laughs> so. I started eating again, started juicing and then eating raw and then learning to enjoy things without so much salt or seasoning. And it's been great. It's been a good experience. Uh, talking with all the people who come here have been really great. And then uh, talking with the people who work here. These doctors have time to talk to you, which is great, which you're not used to. <laughs> so I started on my fast and day two I went into what they call a healing crisis. Thought I was going to die. Um, I was hungry, but I didn't even care that day. I felt so terrible. My blood pressure went up. My temperature went up a little. No way was I even going to consider getting out of bed, except, of course, to go to the bathroom numerous times, but that was my exercise for the day. And I didn't know what day it was for about three days. And I kept saying, oh, this is so weird. And Rick was in there every day saying, Mom, this is great. People have been known to not be seen from their rooms for three or four days. This is not unusual. And it's fine. You're doing great. Your body's doing just what it's designed to do. And this is very good. And you're well monitored, and we're taking very good care of you. Um, I was told with most people about three or four days into the fast that your hunger goes away, but you'll have some sleep problems. Uh, I didn't have that reaction. I had very few sleep problems. I slept eight or nine hours every night besides naps. I moved very slowly, but I was hungry the whole time. Um, I did a water fast for 12 days, and by my 11th day, the coffee table was looking pretty yummy. <laughs> and I'm walking around with Brandon asking him, what in the yard is edible? <laughs> 
Well, arriving here, I decided to prepare myself by having a cup of coffee in the morning and nothing else to eat that day. When I arrived, the people said, no, you're going to have to have some vegetables first. So they put me on uh, raw vegetables for a while, uh, about a day, and then I started my fast. And of course, at the same time, there were several other people also beginning the same day that I was, which I think uh, uh, fellow non-eating people in the same environment, and an environment that's very conducive to rest, and that's what they want you to do here, uh, made it much simpler to actually go through the first couple of days. I was rather surprised that the first two days, when I expected to have rather severe cravings for food, I really didn't. I certainly was hungry, but I was not ravenous and I was not considering eating the shoe leather. There are a number of uh, individuals that at any given time shouldn't fast. And there's a number of contraindications to fasting. Probably the greatest contraindication is fear of fasting. In order for a person to be able to go on a fast, they need to understand enough about fasting so they can relax and allow the body to do what it does best, which is heal itself. There are uh, some conditions which at any given time may uh, present complications that make fasting inappropriate. There are certain types of cancer uh, that can make uh, adjusting to the physiological adaptation of fasting difficult. There are some conditions and certain medications which may uh, contraindicate fasting. And that's uh, decided on an individual basis after a thorough review of a person's medical history, a comprehensive physical exam, and the necessary laboratory uh, testing. Well, today's day four. Yesterday was, uh, I guess, my third day. Um, when I woke up yesterday morning, I found that I had a lot of phlegm and mucus. I had quite a bad cough yesterday, but it was non-productive, and I feel that it expended a lot of energy. Um, just, um, I, you know, I felt pretty good. I didn't have the hunger or any of that. Um, just coughing. And last night during the night the cough became more productive and I was able to get rid of a lot of the mucus and the toxins. And today I feel a lot better. The hunger is totally gone. Um, I just don't have any energy. I'm just tired. Um, I have lost as of yesterday four and a half pounds and I'm anxious to see how that progresses. Yesterday I uh, felt uh, quite gaunt. Uh, my term is I felt gander than a gutted snowbird but uh, no real problems. Uh, a headache started to come on uh, late in the afternoon and then all through the night. Uh, today I uh, feel great. I really feel really good and uh, I was trying to challenge a few people to a race. Um, the first few days of the fast I was very tired. I slept a lot. Then I began to get a throat ache and a bit of an earache. But, uh, they soon cleared up and as they cleared up, I began to feel better and better. And uh, good. Some by the end of it, I, I had no problems. I could have probably gone on a few days longer because I was not hungry. I wasn't having any problems. But uh, time restraints made me stop after 11 and a half days. Well, it's day number eight in our fast. Five days since we give our last report. We've had some good days and we've had some bad days. I had a couple of yucky days. And uh, like I say this morning, I felt really pretty good and uh, maybe a week, but uh, I feel good. I have no upset stomach or anything. Uh, last evening, uh, I upchucked uh, twice, uh, a lot of acid build up, and so I threw up. Uh, a couple of days, uh, I had a slight headache, but it uh, went away. Uh, each day seems to be an adventure. You don't know whether you're going to feel good, bad, or what's going to happen. After a full week of fasting on nothing but distilled water, um, I actually feel pretty good, but I have to say the reason we haven't recorded anything for five days is this is the first time I've been, I've been able to quit coughing long enough to talk. Um, my body has been eliminating like crazy. Um, I've been coughing up tons of phlegm. I've, my bowels have been going crazy. Um, just every way that I can be eliminating, I have been. Um, just dumping stuff like crazy. Um, I've lost 18 and a half pounds so far. I'm really looking forward to um, the end result, to see how, how my body looks. And so my eyes aren't so puffy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and just to be able to go back and say I did 14 days is, you know, it's, not everybody can do that. You know, this is a hard thing that we're doing. 
Most people, it's really hard to stop eating for one meal. Never mind, 14 days. So, yeah, it takes a lot of intestinal fortitude. So, I'm going to do it. Well, day nine. I've lost 22 and a half pounds. Woke up this morning and I just absolutely felt great. I felt uh, better uh, uh, today than I've done in the past nine days. So I seem to be uh, feeling a little better. Uh, still quite weak. I uh, don't go out and run around the block. Uh, I must have felt better because I uh, spent quite a bit of the day resting yesterday. I was a little tired. Uh, I found I was weaker than I realized. I took a shower about the fourth day and decided that was a bad idea. I think the, the hot water was a little too much. And I just didn't realize, but we mainly just rested. So uh, mainly not having hunger was my, was my best part of the fast. I thought, well, this is going to be really difficult. And it wasn't difficult. I was surprised. Uh, this is my eighth fast. I would say this is my best fast. I hope to do one every year, sometimes every eight months. I think it's saving my life. Um, I have an autoimmune disease, which they said after it's been uh, um, analyzed and given a name, that if you don't take the very strong medications that you die within six months. And I've had it probably for about eight years. So I believe this is keeping me alive. I really do. Well, it's day 11. I feel great. I've lost just under 25 pounds. I lost another almost three pounds yesterday. So feeling great. Um, just raring to go. Yesterday I started to feel uh, really pretty good. Uh, the best I've felt so far and today I feel really well. I'm a little weak, but other than that I have no discomfort at all. I just, uh, it's just been a great day. And uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, having more great days like this. If it, uh, all days are like this, that would be a cakewalk. But of course, not all days are like this. There is no concern about adverse uh, loss of muscle protein fasting if the fast is conducted properly. Uh, the key is that while a patient's fasting, they need to be basically quite inactive. No more activity, essentially, than getting out of bed, strolling around a little bit, going to the bathroom, getting water. We don't want patients doing a lot of physical activity. Some of them are incredibly energetic and wish that we'd let them run and work in the garden. That kind of skeletal muscle contraction can promote muscle loss during a fast. But again, done properly, there's very little loss of protein. The prime source of fuel is, is fat. I mean, heart disease, disease obviously responds. Uh, Dr. Ornish in his study has shown that you can take um, people who have heart disease and just putting them on a proper diet after a certain amount of months, you can actually see a reduction in plaquing and you, you get an increased size of their blood vessels again. And we know the same thing happens in, in fasting. Uh, and it happens much quicker with fasting. And fasting is not, fasting done properly is not hard on the heart. Uh, we have to differentiate fasting from starvation and by definition in starvation a patient is starting to to rely on key body tissues, vital body tissues for survival and that's not what you're doing in a proper therapeutic fast. It's not hard on the heart. In fact, fasting is used very successfully, very consistently for cardiovascular disorders. So it's essentially good for the heart. Well, one of the advantages of being a medical doctor is I can, I'm licensed to put people on medication and, and take them off. And most of the time I'm taking them off. And um, when people come into a clinic um, to fast, We'd like them to be on as little medications as possible, so hopefully they've been following a healthy lifestyle for a period of time and have reduced their medications as much as possible. Now, some people are coming in because they can't completely get off the medication. And um, when, for example, somebody comes in and fasts for high blood pressure, hypertension, their blood pressure comes down usually pretty quickly in the first couple of days. And so we don't want them to be on too much medication, the blood pressure will go down too low when they're fasting. 
So we usually put them on a, pro on a protocol where we withdraw them off their medication over the first uh, two or three days of their fast, and we monitor their blood pressures very carefully to make sure that it doesn't rebound up too high, and usually that works out just fine. And uh, so we find that we have just about every patient we've ever seen with hypertension has got off their medications within a few days, and I would say 95% of them stay off their medication after their fast if they live healthfully. Now, we will also fast people for a variety of conditions. You know, asthma is another common condition that people are on medications for. And their requirements for their inhalers so they can breathe uh, drops dramatically. We don't have to wean them off of it. They're just, they just don't need to use it as frequently, and eventually they stop using it altogether. Um, if they're on inhaled steroids, then we usually put them on a protocol to gradually wean them off that over a period of time, depending on how much, how much medication they were taking to begin with. Um, Medications like thyroid, we don't take people off because they probably will ne need to continue on them, although we might reduce the dose a little bit. Medications like hormones, like estrogen or progesterone, if people need them for specific things. Um, we usually don't stop them, although we may reduce them. And um, although we may, after the fast, over the next you know, six months or a year, we may be able to gradually wean them off those medications if they don't stop them suddenly during the fast. Medications like prednisone, if people are on that for various conditions, we will uh, try and reduce the dose of the prednisone as much as possible prior to them coming in uh, for the fast. But at, when they're fasting, we do, usually don't reduce it that much because the body is pretty dependent upon the, the adrenal gland function. And when people take prednisone, it suppresses their natural adrenal glands. And we don't want to take the rug out from under them while they're fasting. They need the adrenal gland function to maintain their blood pressure and their hydration and their mineral balance. And so what we will do is try and get them healthy with the fast and then withdraw them off the, off the prednisone after the fast gradually. There are worries that people who fast are going to have problems in the future maintaining weight because of uh, slower metabolism. And some people have done on their own multiple fasts and they do experience a reduction in their metabolism and it does affect them adversely and they do have trouble maintaining weight. But done properly, fasting should not have that effect. While a patient's fasting, their metabolism definitely slows down. Fasting patients feel cold, they're not energetic at all, um, but the key is after the fast to refeed a person properly, we get them active, we do everything we can to increase the metabolism. After a person fasts, hopefully, if we've done everything right, we've got a person exercising and their furnace is turned up and their metabolism is high and over the long run they should not have a problem with low metabolism. Uh, I came here to do three days and it's now my 12th day and I plan on doing two more days to make it 14. Um, I really have not had any difficulties at all. I haven't felt uh, uh, major hunger pains and um, it's just been, most of all, terrifically relaxing. It's, uh, it's just just a great settling down. <laughs> Uh, altogether, I would say it was uh, easier to deal with the issue of hunger and appetite than I had anticipated. At the same time, uh, I was constantly asked if I had a variety of abdominal symptoms, such as heartburn or abdominal pain or nausea, vomiting or diarrhea, and I had none of those things. What I did have was uh, major disturbances of my sleep. I wasn't able to get more than two or three hours of sleep at night after tossing and turning for several hours. Then I would wake up, stare at the ceiling until just about dawn, drift off for an hour, and that was the, about all the rest that I got, and it was driving me absolutely crazy. This is day 14, and uh, I, feel, I feel better now than I did when I started. Uh, a little bit weak but uh, the first uh, eight or so days were the worst and each day seems to be uh, a little better so I feel a whole bunch better. I uh, hope I can just uh, you know continue to relax and and uh, let my body rest and uh, do uh, go through its healing process. On my fast I have felt great. Today is the 14th day and I have lost 31 pounds so far and I'm feeling great about that. Um, I feel really good. My energy level is, you know, it's not up where it was before I was eating, but I still have plenty of energy to do what I need to do, and um, I, I feel strong. I feel really good. The way that fasting is for me was certainly tolerable 
Uh, I'm not sure that I'd want to do this for uh, on a regular basis. I certainly wouldn't call it fun by any stretch of the imagination, but it was certainly it was certainly worthwhile going through this self-imposed ordeal in order to come out healthier and feeling better at the end. It's much more than just physical well-being. And the last time I fasted, I, I had some significant health problems. And so I wasn't in a position to deal with fine-tuning my life. I, I was in a position where I just needed to be able to function. Now I'm functioning. And so now I can look at at the finer points. Um, I have migraines frequently and so and I know fasting can get rid of that and um, I still tend to get off track with my diet and water fasting does cleanse the palate so that inappropriate foods are no longer appealing. Uh, you know, everybody fasts every day and they break that fast in the morning with breakfast. Uh, many people have done even extended fasts successfully on their own, but I don't recommend it. Um, in terms of ensuring a safe and effective fasting experience, as well as providing the necessary education to ensure that a person continues to make the necessary transitions to healthful living, there's probably no better way for a person to fast than in a, a hygienic institution that's designed specifically to support therapeutic fasting. Um, one of the challenges is that even moderate activity can increase protein utilization in fasting and, and, and minimize the ability to have a safe and effective experience. And if a person's in an environment where they can't get complete rest and they can't get the emotional support that they need and they can't get the reassurance they need during the healing crisis, many times fasts are not, uh, do not end up being conducted successfully and appropriately. Um, being uh, fasted in a setting where there's been a proper physical exam and laboratory procedures done where it's monitored properly can dramatically reduce the likelihood of any type of complication. Today is day 15. Uh, according to the scale I weighed in on, I've lost about 35 pounds now. So that's coming along pretty good. Um, I feel greater than the fact I just don't want to do anything. <laughs> um, just am content to lay around and do nothing. I just can't believe how uh, good I felt uh, for the past three, four days. Heartburn is gone. Uh, I don't have any desire for food, and uh, it's uh, a good experience. Uh, rest a lot. I'm a little bit dizzy when I stand up quick, but uh, other than that, uh, I don't have any problems. I'm just a little bit weak. I see the attitude changing among the public. And some doctors are finding it in their own psychological flexibility to adapt to the change in the public's response and are responding, therefore, to what their patients are asking for. But it's still a very marked minority of physicians. Well, it's day 20 today. I've lost 43 pounds so far. Um, as far as how I'm feeling and stuff, today's been a pretty rough day. I didn't get a lot of sleep last night because of the heartburn, and it's bothered me quite a bit this afternoon. Um, I hope things continue to get better. Well, it's uh, day 20, and uh, I've lost 30 pounds. And... You wonder what we do all day. We uh, sit around, rest, and drink water. And we drink water, and we do some more resting. Uh, how do I feel? Uh, getting a lot weaker. Uh, some heartburn. Uh, you get heartburn to the point where you almost want to uh, throw up. But uh, uh, other than that, uh, doing okay, uh, just surviving. And explain that this is the process where we have um, uh, toxins coming out of our system, and in this particular case with the, the toxics that I had been exposed to, they, um, my bile from my gallbladder was actually backing up into my system and I um, got rid of some pretty good chemicals and I'm glad they came out of my system and said it stayed in there for years causing other problems and and so that was what was called a healing crisis and my 
first experience with it and I'm certainly I know if I'd have been home I would have stopped whatever I was doing and um, you know uh, probably thrown myself back into uh, maybe food or eating or something but that's probably the worst thing you could do after learning a little bit about this it you really need to let those things come out of your system and get them out and here with the doctor's supervision and constant uh, inspiration I guess they keep you fasting and you can um, make it through those tough times and then later on when it's all done it's so nice it's time goes by before you know it sometimes when you're in it you're, you kind of you get hung up on you know the time away from your life that you may be taking and you have so many things that it, you're obligating you to do however um, it really does go by very quickly once you're, once it's over. <laughs> well, it's day 22. Um, I've lost 45 and a half pounds, so I feel really great about that. Uh, day before yesterday, I had a really rough day. Yesterday, I probably felt the best I felt the whole fast. Today, I still feel really good, but I am noticeably weaker. Right, we check patients every single day clinically checking their vital signs. We also do fairly regular checks of uh, uh, urine, uh, blood chemistry, blood counts, and any other lab tests that we feel are necessary. We want to make sure that things are going well. And by and large, we rarely come up with uh, problems in patients, but we want to make sure that continues to be the case. And, and uh, now and then lab work has great value on in individual cases in helping us determine whether we should continue fasting a patient or maybe break a fast a little earlier than you might have figured. So we check patients very thoroughly here. Well, it's day 24. Uh, I've been feeling great the last two, three days. I do, you know, I feel like I can really get up and do things, but when I do, it wears me out really quick. So I'm not doing a whole lot, just a lot of laying around. The days are getting longer and longer. Uh, I'm even starting to run out of things to think about, except maybe food. In this life, in this world that we live in now, we live with bodies and minds that were built for an environment that doesn't resemble the environment that we're living in. We have bodies and minds that were built to be really concerned to get as much food as they could get, to be worrying about predators, and to have to work pretty hard physically, physically demanding work, just to get enough calories to survive. Because we no longer live in that world, there is wonderful things as a result. We get to pursue things that that tickle our psychologies and can give us great pleasure and happiness without having the threat of very serious uh, problems associated with barely surviving. So that is a good thing. The bad thing, or the downside, is that we now have a world that because these things are so plentiful, concentrated calories and lack of effort is so uh, present, that our behavior can slide into a direction that makes us sick. And so the um, part of the key here is to kind of re-engineer that portion of our lives, not our whole lives, but that portion of our lives back to what is consistent with our natural history. Day 26 and I've lost about uh, 36 and a half pounds. And today is really a good day. Probably feel as good today as I have on the whole fast. Uh, my energy level has come up. I just really feel good today. I think the, the, the stress that we go through every day and so forth is, is got to help push your blood pressure up, uh, which was a problem when I came here. Um, I've tried to, uh, to do some fasting before at home, uh, mostly with juices. And uh, the problem is that the stress doesn't go away. You're still in the center of things. Uh, I think a supervised uh, fast of a longer duration at some place like this facility is just really tremendously helpful because you get so much more done and there's somebody who checks on you twice a day and they take tests uh, during the process so you know that you're, you're doing well and uh, there's somebody there to pull the plug if you're not, but uh, it's, it doesn't seem to be a problem with anybody who's here. 
Uh, but I just think the supervised fast is the only way to go, and, and you also get away from it all, and you get that relaxation. Uh, making the transition to good eating or proper health is never an easy switch. It's something that generally doesn't take place overnight. And like any habit or behavior change, usually has its fits or starts. And coming to the center is one sort of running leap that people can have to get on, on a good track, to uh, give them a, a pathway and some direction. But to making that transition, there are some key points. They are to make good healthy eating and good healthy behavior as convenient as possible. My fast was smooth sailing the entire way through. I didn't have any acute symptoms. It was just a lot of rest and I was very tired. Sometimes your head feels like you just can't get it up off the pillow. So you sleep a little bit more and then get, get your energy back and you go out and stroll around and just really enjoy the day. I had tremendous mental health benefits last time I did this. Tremendous changes. I had been so sick that my world had become just me and you know, just trying to get through the day. And when I started getting better, suddenly I became interested in people and relationships and contributing something to the world. And so I'm, part of why I'm here is to sort of sort out how I'm going to rearrange my life now. Oh, my first juice was wonderful. Uh, every, lived up to everything I'd been imagining for the previous 12 hours. I couldn't get to sleep right away because I was thinking about it so much. Um, watermelon and cucumber, just a little bit diluted. Absolutely. <laughs> I never thought life could have so much meaning in just a little cup of, cup of juice. And then the morning of the third day after the fast, I had solid food, and there's nothing to compare with the texture and flavor of a stick of celery. <laughs> there is nothing quite so appealing as the explosive crunch of a cherry tomato as you grind down on it. There is nothing to compare with the tingy tartness of a slice of bell pepper, whatever color it might be. And although I've always enjoyed salad, I would have to say that the first salad after fasting was a marvelous experience. And the only thing that was put on it to enhance it at all was a little spritz of fresh lemon juice squeezed out of the lemon. Enjoy. All right, I just finished 30 days of having nothing but distilled water. I've lost 56 and a half pounds, and I'm ready to party. <laughs> All right. All right, let's we'll see what it tastes like. Mm. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, 30, what, 31 days and 46 pounds. 46 pounds. Well, let's see what happens here. Wow, that is that is a piece of heaven. Well, initially you gain a couple of pounds just with uh, rehydration. When you get uh, juices in you, you start to retain a little bit more water. And so two or three pounds uh, is what you gain in the first you know week or so. Hey, it smells good. <laughs> The refeeding part is the best part. <laughs> Although it's very strange uh, when you think about fasting, you think about really depriving yourself and so forth. And um, during the fasting, neither one of us uh, got to the point where we felt real dire hunger. Probably the most important parts, part of the overall process is proper refeeding. An inappropriate return to feeding too rapid return or return to the inappropriate foods can really undo many of the benefits that an individual derives from fasting. And also it's in refeeding that an individual begins to integrate the habits that are necessary for long-term success. No matter how well a person does with fasting, unless they're prepared to make the necessary diet and lifestyle modifications, their problems are going to tend to want to return. It's only through the diet and lifestyle modification that long-term success can be achieved. 
and that's one of the important processes that we go through with a uh, proper residential mm -hmm. care program is people are given extensive education so that they can understand what to do, why to do, and how to do it. So that after they leave the confines of the facility, they're able to implement these changes on an ongoing basis. Tastes so strange after after twelve days of nothing, twelve days of distilled water. Mm. Boy, that's good. <laughs> so it's eleven days, fifteen hours, and thirty minutes. <laughs> Oh no, I have to distract one hour because of daylight saving time. <laughs> the food after the fast is delicious. It's, uh, your taste buds change and uh, you notice the, the texture of the food and every bit of flavour in your mouth is just treasured. It's delicious and uh, it makes you appreciate eating that much more. This is our uh, seventh day of refeeding. Uh, we started out with three days of juice, then we had two days of raw food, and two days, today's our second day of steamed food. Um, I've lost, I lost a total of about 56 and a half pounds, but I've put on about two and a half back uh, with rehydration, so I'm sitting at about 54 pounds now. I feel great, I feel more energy, stronger, uh, walking around doing those things that were a chore before is almost effortless now. Um, not having to lug all that, I guess you'd call it a 50 pound do bag of dog food around with me everywhere I go is really helping a lot. The food has been great. Uh, even things I don't like are tasting really good. Having some steamed carrots is like eating candy. Uh, steamed cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, chard. Um, things I never eat because they just didn't seem that good or just wonderful now. Um, it's amazing how little things like that become such a big priority when you don't eat anything but distilled water for 30 days and make a lifestyle change. As Joe says, it's been seven days since we started to juice and then we've uh, been on steamed vegetables for about two days now. And uh, what, a, what a great event it is to be able to taste this uh, juice and food for the first time really the way it's supposed to be. Your taste buds are just alive and dancing with excitement. Everybody's smiling when they're eating. My old energy is back. My son is saying to me, Mom, you look like the mom I remember. You look like mom. Now I still have about 20 pounds of weight to go, but I lost 22 pounds in the amount of time I was out here, and I felt great. Um, my cholesterol came down 60 points. My blood pressure is lower than it's been in quite some time. It wasn't extremely high, but it's just much lower right now. All my blood levels are really good, and I'm very happy I came. Now, the 12th day, I was saying, no way am I ever gonna do this again. But since then, I have felt so great, and I am so happy I'm now thinking this may very well be a yearly cleanse for me and next time I'll know a little more what I'm getting into so I think I'll better have a better mental attitude but I'm really glad that my children dropped me off here kicking and screaming and I owe them big time for it. When I left Lindsay uh, uh, a month ago when she came out here she was uh, ill as much as she uh, was well or had crossed the 50% line and we needed to do something and the, uh, the medical guys really had, had no prescription uh, to uh, make her feel a sense of health. And uh, when I got out here it was, uh, it was immediately apparent that she had, had been refreshed uh, there was some uh, renewal, and it was more than just uh, the obvious physical uh, improvement. It was uh, emotional and mental uh, and spiritual, too, for that matter. She lost, um, oh, 15 to 20 percent of her body weight. Oh, this place is perfect. It's um, in a lovely natural setting. It is so peaceful and quiet, and there's nature all around, and 
the weather, although it's been a bit cloudy recently, it's, it's been quite warm and very comfortable to be in. And the plants around you, the, the gardens around the, the, the whole clinic, it's lovely to be here. The facility is very nice. The grounds are beautiful. Um, it's not, I wouldn't call it luxurious or anything like that, but it has all the basic needs met and I think it's comfortable. I think it's just fine. One of the things, for example, is in people trying to eat properly. When people are trying to eat properly to, for example, lose weight, it's very difficult for them to control their eating behavior despite all their knowledge about what they should be eating if they're using food as a stimulant when they're tired. Pesticides certainly, as well as all environmental toxins, are a concern. The people that probably should be most worried, though, about chemicals and pesticides are people that are choosing to consume large amounts of animal food. Um, animal foods biologically concentrate po poisons from the environment, including pesticides, within their cells or their tissues. And if we choose to eat the flesh of those animals after we kill them, that material can then accumulate within our own uh, cells. So the biological concentration of pesticides and toxic residues, as well as the drugs that we feed animals, um, are responsible for a large percentage of the total body load of toxins within human beings. Um, uh, some suggestions are that over 90 percent of the total body load of pesticide residues and toxic materials may be as a consequence of the consumption of animal foods. By eliminating animal foods from the diet, you can eliminate a primary source of toxic residue. Now, commercially grown fruits and vegetables with pesticide residue can also be a source of toxins, and certainly that's why we advocate as much as possible the consumption of organically grown fruits and vegetables, whole grains and legumes, as well as raw nuts and seeds whenever possible. Rest is, is vital. Rest is a big part of what we advise patients to do while they're here, as well as in the real world at home. It, in my mind, it's one of the, the top three things that I want patients to really think about and to prioritize. And uh, while a patient's here fasting, again, they, can, they should not be very physically active. They need to rest, they need to sleep or try and at least nap uh, as much as they can. Uh, most patients need to rest, I think, far more than they ever thought they might. Um, Many, many people have gotten a misconception that you can get by on just a few hours of sleep for the rest of your life, and it's, it's unfortunate. So we tell patients to rest a lot, sleep a lot without guilt. It's a form of recharging your batteries. By itself, even without fasting, it has great therapeutic value. I think the benefits are many. One is that fasting allows the body a chance to get a physiological rest and detoxify accumulated intermediary products of metabolism. That is, whether it be normal metabolic products or abnormal accumulations that build up within the cells of the body. Whether we're talking poisons like PCB and dioxin or normal intermediary products like cholesterol, uh, uric acid, other materials that may accumulate as a consequence of dietary excess. Um, fasting also allows the body to clear its palate and reset its apostatic mechanisms, making it easier to make a transition to healthful living. Uh, fasting has many benefits, uh, depending on the individual and what their circumstances going into it. In my experience of working with patients using healthy lifestyle um, over the last 14 years, one of the missing links that has become very obvious to me in a lot of people following healthy lifestyle already is the importance of sleep and balance. There's a lot of people that I see, myself included, that eat a healthy diet, exercise, have a positive attitude, good relationships, and so on, but aren't completely well. And what people don't realize is, is that, for the most part, sleep is when your healing occurs, and sleep is when your maintenance occurs. It turns out that, for example, some of the hormones that stimulate healing, like growth hormone and testosterone and erythropoietin, which stimulates the production of blood cells and interleukin, which is associated with immune function and so on. These hormones are released primarily during the deepest levels of sleep, which we call stage four sleep, associated with delta wave brain activity. And if people don't get enough deep sleep or don't sleep deeply, period, uh, they don't get enough quality or quantity of sleep, then they don't fully recover from everyday wear and tear. And as a consequence, they start accumulating wear and tear and end up with symptoms of disease and fatigue. But well, we are pretty much committed to no, no animal products. Uh, I've really learned a lot being here about the meat 
which I already knew something about the meat, but the dairy has surprised me. So I think that will really help us. And we'll just increase our vegetables. So we already were into vegetables and carbohydrates, so we'll just increase those. I'm surprised how much food you can have. That part's wonderful if you're eating the right food, not all the fat. I had a lot of benefit from the fasting program. Uh, the first thing that happened, uh, I stopped my blood pressure medicine about uh, two or three days before coming here. My blood pressure did, was never very high to begin with. My diastolic's running in the uh, upper 90s. I hadn't been in the low hundreds for quite some time, and I think that had to do with the work that I'd already done with my diet. But within two days of starting the fast, my systolic pressure had come down to less than 110, and my diastolics were down into the low 80s. And now I've been eating for five days, and this morning I'm approximately 100 over 70. So I've gotten a stupendous result with the hypertension right away. My blood sugars were uh, cruising in the 150s or so before I arrived here. During the fast, my blood sugars went down t to about 90 and stabilized there. And I was told by the staff here that that's actually rather high. They expect fasters to have blood sugars running in the 70s or even lower. Now that I started to refeed, my morning glucose has been running at the upper end of the normal range. But that certainly beats the 250 to 350 that I was having before I started the plan. And it's just been fun having the support of the other people, even if you're not talking medical. Just that you're all here doing the same thing and you understand. And it's going to be fun going back to the outside world and telling our friends in a very non-threatening way. <laughs> well, the uh, $100 a day that we charge at the center uh, is possible because we've got some very dedicated employees that work real hard at moderate wages. We have a very efficient operation and that's allowed us to keep our costs quite moderate. I think we're going to see some major changes. Uh, because the public demand for natural therapies is, in my estimation, growing and growing really close to exponentially. And the infrastructure that supports conventional medical practice is having a harder and harder time maintaining its legitimacy economically. And it's already lost its legitimacy in the eyes of the public from, uh, in terms of its intellectual authority. So I think we're going to see some big changes in the years to come. I would absolutely do this fast again, without hesitation. I plan to do another one next year. And um, it's just such a great experience. It's very, very seldom in life does anyone have the opportunity to have absolutely all basic needs taken care of. And not only in terms of you know, having shelter and having the food I needed. I had um, fantastic trained people working with me. Um, the program was adapted to my needs. It wasn't just a cookie cutter, you come in, you do it this way. It was adapted as, as my needs changed. We, we reevaluated, we changed some of our plans. Um, my emotional needs were taken care of. Just Phenomenally, I felt they were spending so much time with me and my physical needs. I was completely impressed that they were willing to deal with emotional needs also. I definitely will do more fasts, yeah. Um, this was my first one, uh, and I think it's gone so well. I feel so much better for it. And I see the, the benefit of not eating for an extended period of time. It doesn't frighten me anymore, and I think that, yeah, as soon as I feel anywhere off balance, anywhere not as good as I want to be, then the first thing I'll think of doing is another fast. I will absolutely fast again. It was the best experience I've had in my all 19 years of my living. Uh, I probably won't have to do it every year because I plan on living uh, really healthily in between. So it'll be probably 10 to 14 days every other year. I would absolutely come to an environment like this because of uh, all the people, everything's taken care of. You can completely withdraw uh, the, the amount of rest that you can achieve is just just so wonderful and so soothing. Uh, absolutely I would fast again. Just a wonderful experience all the way around. Well, I'm starting to feel a whole lot better. My energy is coming back and I'm starting to feel really good and I'm excited about going home. Would I do it again? Absolutely. I mean going the traditional medical route is not for me and so yeah I would do it again. I would hope to live 
my, my goal would be to live well enough so that I don't have to do it again. But if I don't feel well, yeah, the first thing I would do would be to fast. There's no question in my mind, I've seen it in as I, my friends and family and to, in some of my patients in whom I've actually been able to talk them into doing it, that fasting can save your life. Well, I've been home for about 30 days. The fast went great. Um, the doctors and the staff at the clinic were phenomenal. They did a great job of educating us. Uh, they talk the talk and they walk the walk and that example is what has probably made it so easy for me to be able to stay away from the animal products and make this lifestyle change that I've had to make. Uh, I'm feeling better than I've felt in years. I'm able to exercise and do more than I've been able to do in a long time and it's just been wonderful for me. The fast was definitely the best thing I've ever done for myself in my entire life. Please forgive some of my camera work. I know it hasn't always been the best. Maybe it was because I wasn't feeling good all the time. There are many good fasting clinics across the country, and the main reason we picked this one was it was closest to our hometown. Fasting may not be for everyone, but it was the best thing that I've ever done for myself. I've made some lifestyle changes because of it, mostly because of the education and training I received from the doctors. And lastly, I want to thank the patients for allowing me to interview them and follow them around with my camera even when they didn't want me there.